Hello, everyone. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. And I've started recording. So be careful of what you say. <laughs> so we have I'm only two cups of coffee in. I don't know what I'm going to say. Yeah. So did you have the WSBA meeting last week? The, which meeting? We've got too many probably. The, uh, the enterprise. We did, uh, and the calendar was kind of full. I apologize for that because we had two guest organizations that were presenting, but I, I will definitely coordinate with uh, Andrea Tiniano, who's our chair, Vipin, and we'll, we'll do an enterprise solutions working group that connects with what we're, what we're doing here. Okay, beautiful. Can we thank you, Kelly? Agenda? I'm sorry, Bipin. Can we capture that on the agenda? Okay. That way, someone can hold me accountable and kick me in the shin if I don't. Yeah, Kelly is taking notes, minutes, so that'll uh, definitely she'll she'll probably put put that on the notes. Um, anyway, so before we start this meeting, I have to say that. Um, we are operating by the antitrust rules according to the Hyperledger Foundation's rules. So um, basically it is meant to encourage uh, competitive behavior that, that means we're not colluding. Uh, and if you do not agree with this antitrust policy of wherever you're joining from, please, um, please, uh, do not attend the call because that is the only requirement for the call that you be in agreement with the antitrust policy and the code of conduct. Uh, other than that, all are welcome to the call. And uh, I think we should kick off by uh, with Karen uh, saying something more about the polls and uh, various other administrative um, notes that she, she can give us. Karen, are you there? Or should, should we wait for a few minutes? I see you're on mute, but uh, I don't know whether you're there. Hi, yes. Hi. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I had some background noise here I was trying to get rid of. Um, yeah, in terms of the polls, um, well, I mean, it's up to you, Bibin, to decide when we finally decide on a time. Um, we do have a couple people that I've heard from on the West Coast that would like to attend the call. Um, and, uh, and this time is a little bit early for them. So uh, what we wanted to suggest was, would this group that's here now be open to a time that's maybe one hour later or two hours later? Well, the more you push into the time, the uh, more difficult it's going to be for the uh, APAC people to attend if they so desire. Uh, so one hour would be best, but you know that when we go into the daylight savings time, I mean, when we go out of daylight savings times, we'll be advanced one hour. Uh, so the, um, you know, the people from APAC will even be further dis uh, disadvantaged. But I'm all for changing the time to one hour later if people agree, even though the poll um, did have a clear winner, which was this time, which is 9 a.m. Wednesdays. Um, we could make it for the convenience of the people on the West Coast. Unfortunately, these people just uh, uh, just told me about this. Uh, there are two features about the poll. One is you can suggest your own time, which not, not too many people knew about. Uh, the second is that um, that you know, you have to vote in order for your voice to be heard, which we have seen time and again in other settings. Uh, the 
uh, people have reached out to me same as they had to you karen uh saying that the time is too early and my only suggestion to them was to suggest a different time and to vote but now that the vote is concluded we could open it up with a different you know with one more suggestion which i had actually added at the end which is one hour later 10 a.m uh, let me know if it, this is inconvenient for any of you because we we want it to be uh, convenient for the, most of the folks who are planning to attend the call. Anybody have I anything? Make, I can make 10 work. Um, I'll be traveling on some instances, but um, that works for me. I'm okay with 10. Yeah, Money? I'm fine too. Okay, looks like uh, we have general consensus unless uh, someone else really uh, objects. But I think we should record it this in a minute so that it doesn't appear that I'm just making some crazy decision to uh, overturn the results of the poll. Anyway, um, I'd also try to publicize that and to reopen the poll for another, let's say, week or so, uh, so that then we can actually uh, get them to meeting properly started and on everybody's calendar for the rest of the year. Um, that's the first thing. Now, as far as the agenda is, goes, we have only a few items on it, which I had put in there. So if you want to add more items or talk about something, then we are always uh, welcome to do so. But I'm going to proceed according to the agenda, uh, which, which I have set up here. And it says antitrust policy and code of conduct. And the second item is introductions. Uh, we already did the poll results. We already did, uh, you know, the call for volunteers, which uh, Kelly seems to have answered by uh, taking the minutes. And the next piece on the agenda is uh, introductions. Everybody should give a brief introduction, the reason for their uh, presence on this call and what they hope to get from it. Uh, try to keep it short, like, you know, 20 or 30 seconds. If you do not want to speak, that's fine, too. I'll try to call on people so that you don't have to feel like um, you have to jump in the gun there. Um, Gary? Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Gary Miller. I'm with Tinfane. Uh, we're a blockchain technology company focused on capital markets. Our inaugural platform can run securitization transactions, just run the data and reporting for an asset-backed securities deal. And my background is not in technology. I, I spent 20, 25 years as a securitization banker, structured finance banker, and uh, just learned about this special interest group yesterday on the marketing call. Happy to be here. Um, that's great. Uh, Securitization size. Sorry, securitization is a very important part of uh, the issuance process. And Natalia, who had uh, volunteered to be the vice chair, uh, was also working in this from uh, Spain. Hmm. Uh, so I don't see her on the call, but I'm, I'm no doubt she will be interested in working with you on that. Uh, next one is Al. Hi, Vivian. It's Al Brandt. Uh, I work with Block Ledger, and we're a uh, blockchain technology company focused on the equipment finance space. Uh, and so uh, we're very interested in how you take equipment loan documents and um, uh, securitize them or provide uh, loan syndication, things of that nature. Well, this is uh, another thing that I was wondering about. Uh yesterday because I have the, some, some kind of a taxonomy there 
And in the capital markets uh, structure, I had put in uh, uh, bonds, equities, repos, and derivatives. I was wondering about the place for uh, syndicated loans. Uh, what is your view on that? I mean, I know that syndicated loans often are, uh, you know, operate on the tranches of loans that are then divided up by the syndicate. But, um, you know, in terms of the further securitization of that and the secondary market, uh, you know, if you have any comments on that, that would be great. Yeah, Vipin, I, I think a leveraged loan syndication on its own is almost fits more into the bond world, but I think there's also a, a category like for securitization where assets are being pooled. Like you say, once it becomes in a CLO, say a leveraged loan, or we're talking of auto loans or equipment loans, equipment leases, uh, that's, that's really a whole other industry and category, which is really the, the, the pooling and securitization of, of you know, pools of assets and the bonds are based on the cash flows that are collected. But will will it fit into the capital markets uh, thing? Call. That's that's the question. Well, uh, it's clearly an uh, integral, large part of the debt capital markets. You know, eight hundred and fifty billion a year. Yeah, the, the the categories that that this all encompasses. Although we're focused on equipment finance, you know, you can talk about. Um, mortgages, auto loans, there's a, a, a lot of debt out there that ends up being sold out to a secondary market. Yeah, I was heavily involved in the technical aspects of securitization of credit um, and very familiar with the uh, with the data-driven approach that uh, we've taken for uh, those Kind of asset uh, securitizations, I mean, collateral based securitizations. Um, Gary, somebody, uh, Kelly is asking, what is the spelling of your uh, company name? Intain, I think it is I N T A I N or something. Yes, sir. Uh, I N T A I N. Okay. Uh, next up is Money, who is also an expert on derivatives and swaps. Yeah, I'm uh, Manny Pillai from SwapSub. Um, yeah, we are involved in implementing uh, blockchain solutions for uh, OTC derivatives as well as uh, on the other side of uh, other side, actually involved deeply in uh, uh, custody solution and more of an institutional custody uh, uh, settlement. Uh, uh, all these things fall under more of uh, you know we are looking at purely uh, implementing on data standards, which is pretty very, very lacking in the marketplace today. So we are actually in getting uh, we are actually involved in this just CDM, which is a common domain model for the uh, financial industry. Although they started off with derivatives, it's moved on now into securities. So um, uh, any solution that out in the market uh, eventually have to uh, be able to. Uh, store data or, or represent uh, uh, asset movement or life cycle movement using only standardized data because the regulators have come very hard on that and we have already seen that in fact as uh, the regulators in, in, in the UK is already looking at uh, CDM as a going forward for reporting purposes. Uh, we are also meeting with the SEC and CFTC uh, next month uh, regarding this. Uh, particularly with respect to standard and um, uh, and coming up with a, a robust uh, institutional framework for custody and uh, settlement. That that kind of goes with uh, you know all the topics about securitization. Once you securitize, now what do you do with it? How do you secure them? How do you distribute them? Uh, how do you make sure that this can be you know further leveraged? That's where we are focused. Thank you, Bonnie. We'll uh, go into the details of the um, standardization effort that we pushed forward last week during that report at the end of the, uh, I mean, towards after the introductions. Um, Karen, please uh, introduce yourself. And
Hi, uh, my name is Karen O'Tony. Um, I'm the director of ecosystem at Hyperledger. And I'm based here in New York City. And um, what our ecosystem team does, one of the things is uh, we work very closely with the SIGs. We help them get started um, and provide support to anything that the SIGs needs in terms of uh, working with uh, the broader community at Hyperledger, um, accessing any of our resources and things like that. Kelly? Yes, hi, my name's Kelly, and I pretty much am an academic, but I do side gigs a lot. Right now I'm working on helping somebody get going in the Opportunity Zone X space, uh, excuse me, space. Uh, what was that, Opportunities? I, I didn't catch the last bit, sorry. Anyway, um, Ron. Good morning, everyone. Ron Quaranta, uh, currently chairman of the Wall Street Blockchain Alliance, headquartered here in New York. Uh, prior to that, spent uh, approaching 30 years in, in global financial markets and financial technology, including a, an extraordinarily long stint at Thomson Reuters, where I was head of exchange trading. Uh, I know a lot of the folks on this call, so uh, really a privilege to be here. Happy to work. Looking forward to working with you all. I'm Vipin Bharathan. Um, I have been involved in capital markets of various other technology initiatives, including media companies, uh, others, but uh, the latest stint was in a big uh, international bank in, in a, uh, driving the um, creation uh, of a MBS platform and then also associated credit related uh, securitization and analytics. So I'm very familiar with the creation of large um, infrastructure in banks and how it has to interact with other functions, including legal um, uh, compliance, IT security, and so on. So. Uh, and of, of course, lately I've been involved in blockchain and I'm on the, also the chair of the Identity Working Group and general uh, Hyperledger Technical Ambassador and a lab steward and other things. And I, I run a uh, enterprise blockchain consultancy, which is called DLT.NYC. Uh, that's my current gig. Um, so with, without much... Uh, more, let's talk about the projects that we had proposed. First of all, uh, about the attendance today, uh, several people contacted me saying that they are on summer vacation uh, and they won't be able to attend. So that is probably the reason why we only have seven participants. Uh, second, um, about the projects, you can propose any project uh, and as long as you take a lead and uh, have an idea of what uh, what those projects should be, uh, should do. And initially, we start off by just talking about uh, capital markets in a slightly general way. Then we drill down into the, the hope is that we can drill down into the, uh, into that particular, uh, particular line of inquiry um, and see the connections to blockchains in general and to Hyperledger-based technologies in particular, especially with projects that have been launched or are in the process of being launched either as an MVP or as a, uh, as, uh, you know, actual product. And what are the challenges that people face? Um, so, I'm going to share the screen uh, in terms of um, the projects page that we have so that we can take a look at what, what uh, projects 
we have. I hope you, everyone can see this. Yep. Uh, I apologize about the hundreds of tabs on the top, but that's the way I roll. Anyway, um, the first project is about taxonomy, which is a fancy way of saying classification. Uh, so as we have bonds, I mean, as we have the capital markets, we can segment it into different ways of classification. Uh, the first, um, so I'll take you to the, uh, to the one that I have developed in terms of the bond, uh, you know, in terms of the infrastructure there. So we have the capital markets in the center and we have bonds. Then we have equities. Uh, I have put derivatives and repos in a different, uh, on the same level, even though many of them would refer to those primary instruments as a, um, you know, in, in order to do the derivatives or the repos, uh, because the analysis and the structure of those and the standards around those are slightly different. Now, the question that I asked just now was about syndicated loans and other things, and I do have them here in the, uh, under the bond umbrella, sort of, uh, as CDOs and CLOs, and of course, as CMOs. You, you might uh, want to add a box there for asset ABS. The ABS and MBS kind of go hand in hand. They're typically segregated out, but they're, you know, viewed in the same trade rags and this, you know, they're kind of combined generally, but you might put an ABS in there. So in other words, if I, if I, let's say that I, so I'll show you what I do, right? Okay, so I want to edit the diagram. I bring up the, I mean, it'll take a couple of seconds here because it's using Gliffy, which is integrated into our system, into the wiki. Uh, but the editing is very, very easy, right? It's not uh, difficult at all. So what you're saying is uh, I would add, a, you know, um, so I would say ABS and I would put it almost at the same level as MBS. Then I would put the CLO. CLO and CDO are kind of grouped together typically a little bit, you know, in terms of the market, how they. Yeah. And then I can say, you know, I can talk about the different assets that would, um, Back and asset back security. Uh, the only re reason I have their covered bonds is because obviously they are uh, covered by collateral, right? Yeah, covered bonds, though, speaking of, you know, covered bonds is already a term of art where a large bank is very, was more common in Europe, would issue just straight bank debt, but they would take a piece of their, their portfolio, they'd collateralize it. So a covered bond in and of itself is this thing. So you might. For this, these purposes, you might not use that word covered, but collateralized bonds. Yes. Uh, okay. So we can, uh, we can um, modify that, right? So let me tell you that I've been using this tool. I wanted to make it live. In other words, it's not just a pretty picture, but when you click on something like Capital Markets, I want a link that will take me to what, what the glossary term for Capital Markets is. And as we go further, we can then also add to that link the uh, projects uh, and other, other uh, you know, efforts in the blockchain space that cover not not capital markets as a whole but in terms of you know if if there is something that covers 
specifically MBS or ABS, then we would uh, uh, explain it in that link. But having difficulty with the links, uh, you know, you can insert the link, but doesn't seem like um, we can do, a, you know, we can click on the figure and go to the link. It seems like uh, that thing is broken, but I'm talking to Silona, uh, who's the um, head of um, community architects in um, Hyperledger, who did propose the this um, goofy um, uh, plugin and see how we can work that out. But anybody who wants to change any of this stuff is uh, free to do so, right? Uh, because it's editable document, we can we can all share every, everybody's knowledge. Um, so that's this is the initial taxonomy picture. Then we have the other one, which is suggested by and which we went through last time, which is based on a life cycle. And I had taken a, a diagram from Oliver Wyman's uh, blockchain and capital markets uh, in association with Euroclear. For that and then um, I just inserted a, uh, tox, uh, a token taxonomy um, well the thing on the left is going to be is, is actually going to be uh, d deleted okay uh, but uh, the token taxonomy classification hierarchy is taken from the ethereum uh, alliances um, token taxonomy in initiative. So this is just another way of looking at tokens, um, which would be the connection between blockchains and the world of finance itself. So there would be some mapping of these in, into the issuance aspects of, uh, you know, securitization, trading, and so on and so forth or even the payment uh, part. So uh, that, uh, that was my um, thought. Now, this is just one of the projects that we are doing with the taxonomy. Um, it, it's not for some reason it doesn't want to cooperate. So I'm going to go here and go to the general projects. And now uh, the second project here is the data standards. Uh, Money will take us through a couple of those examples that he has. If you want, you can take control of money or I can. Uh, you just just uh, give the presentation, bring up the page and it's only over. Yeah, here. I'll bring up the page and you can talk on that. Yeah. Um, so this is, in, in, in essence, we're trying to you know, uh, put together all the common data standards used in the capital markets. Uh, obviously, this is a, you know, I'm, I'm just doing a rough cut at this point. Uh, a lot more need to, needs to be added. Um, so the idea is to say, you know, what are the current existing standards in the capital markets? Uh, how are these standards being either enhanced or being applied to uh, more of the digital economy uh, with respect to capital markets? Uh, and how do we, you know, uh, add more standards? And, and definitely there could be more standards evolving in, in various initiatives by the members. So we'll, we'll more, be more than happy to, uh, you know, uh, they're more than happy to edit this thing and add those standards at least, outline them. Uh, I started out with a few that's been most popular, FIX being the, you know, the oldest of all, or more of a messaging standard for uh, you know, trading uh, anything from equities to futures to uh, FX, uh, and, and now even derivatives. Uh, this is the oldest form data standard. Uh, I don't want to go into more details. You can find more information. I've just given the links over there. Uh, second thing is FTML, which is the derivative standard uh, of data standard uh, that is being applied in the marketplace, with primarily on the OTC derivatives, uh, covering interstate swaps, equity uh, uh, swaps. That are you know used comes under the primarily under the, uh, under the 
say uh, under the ISDA or the International Swab, uh, Swab and Derivatives Association, uh, any product that comes under that is, is, uh, is uh, you know, is, is, uh, or at least you know, all these uh, players in that space use the PMR product. Now, since the CDM is a new standard that's evolving out of FTML, interestingly enough, when the derivatives of our ISDA group looked at the, uh, the current standard, they found that FTML has evolved over the past almost 15, 15 years. Um, the, the challenge was uh, to represent FTML as is, as a beginning standard, was that it, it, it was uh, considered to be very difficult the fact that any single player could be represented in more than one way. And that does not work very well when you're trying to digitize, uh, come up with a data as well as a business process standard. Now that's an important thing. So far we only talked about data standard. Uh, now the CDM is also trying to outline business process standards uh, so that everything from every, every part of a life cycle of a trade uh, can be documented and hence can be shared between parties. Now, uh, I'm still in the editing phase, and I'll, I'll hope to kick off uh, in a week or so, covering more on the CDM, and then uh, separately ISO 20022. Uh, that's something that uh, uh, is currently being used by ASX uh, in their implementation. Um, so, uh, it, what we are seeing is that is, so as we implement blockchain solutions, the most important thing, you know, is generally overlooked is uh, what are the data standards, simply because when regulators eventually want to uh, approve or even uh, acknowledge any, any new um, blockchain-based solution, uh, they, look, they def definitely look for uh, what kind of the data standards is on which the, uh, the blockchain stores the data or communication to be part. So this is something that uh, we think is very fundamental to uh, the markets. Uh, and hence, you know, uh, we're most welcome for anyone contributing more on uh, the industry standards or comments. Uh, yeah. so that's on my part, and I'll, I'll continue to update this over the next few seconds. Sounds good. Um, so, before we go, we I tried to uh, I tried I attempted to uh, create a template for standards, which is up top. Uh, and uh, Mani was asking me uh, whether there is such a template available uh, where we can examine uh, the standard in all those different uh, sort of dimensions uh, and uh, create a standard template for, well, too many standards in that template, uh, in that sentence, but Basically, is there a template that we can use to um, describe these standards uh, which would suit our purposes? Uh, and I quickly put together something there, which is the, I've got eight um, headings. So if anybody has any ideas on these template uh, templates uh, that we could use for standards that would be very useful. Um, anyone has suggestions about this or? Do you think we could have um, uh, different sources for this, uh, this kind of template? I mean, I know there are some organizations who developed this like Oasis. Uh, and uh, I, I was going to look there to see whether they have something. This is like a meta standard for standards. So do you mean a, Vipin, you mean a template for like, I mean, just, and Manny, you and I've spoken about this. F fix, for example, fix or fix ML as a template for a specific standard capturing for specific types of digital currency transactions or, or I mean, it's a fairly straightforward uh, template we can use, but I want to make sure I'm understanding correctly. Well, since we're going to have a whole bunch of standards described below, starting with fix, fix ML, FPML, and uh, ISDA 
CDM and so on, which are slightly different in it. Each, each are slightly different. We want to put them into this, uh, this template so that we cover all the categories. Like for example, in the, in the, on the top of the document, I have these eight, uh, eight things here. Mm -hmm. so, suppose I want to describe fix, fix ML. I would say I would do an overview of what fix, fix ML is. And then why is it applicable to uh, capital market SIG and blockchains? And then the category, like is it a data standard, a data interchange standard, or you know, does are there uh, legal ramifications? Uh, then there would be something which says what is the standards body that controls the standard uh, and the regulation of or so sovereign adoption which regulatory agencies refer to the standard, is it a requirement? Uh, then adoption rates, like what percentage of the market has adopted the standard, then perceived challenges or gaps, uh, listed POCs, MVPs, production use cases, and the next step. Um, so this is something I just threw together, right? Yes. When I, so, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry, Vivian. So I, I think I think some of the foundational work. And I'm Manny. I'm happy to coordinate with you on the standard stuff. I think some of the for, for foundation, <clears throat> foundational data around, particularly around fix and fix ML. Um, I, I used to sit on their digital asset, digital currency working group. So some of that, the preliminary answers to the overview category, et cetera, is 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 information we can put together in a way that's digestible within this special interest group. Um, and I, I suspect once we start evolving into FPML and and is the uh, maybe even XBRL, for example, we can start fitting it into some of those um, templates. But I, th I think from an overall standards perspective, some of the foundational works already available that we could we could liberally borrow and include here. I mean, Manny, yeah. do, you, do you agree yeah. with that? Manny has the yeah. link here. So for example, if I go to the link there, it, it talks about those, the foundation work, which is already there. So it's not like, uh, so we don't want to recreate you know, the details of what is there. Is this more, other... It's more or less like a wiki. That's all we're looking at right now, right? I mean, and, and, and definitely, Ron, we can, we can, you know, we, we can talk about it and say this other, other uh, cross references you want to bring it in and definitely it is good. Now, you know, we, we also work uh, in similar standards in, in, in the WSBA organization yep. on, on that association. There's a whole enterprise working group. Uh, we tackle some of these issues. So uh, this is more technical uh, in SIG, so we'll be trying to put together here, but definitely we can bring in and, and cross collaborate wherever possible. Yeah, and, and Vipin, to expand on, on Manny's point just a little bit, um, even deeper diving into some of the more technicals around what are, the, what are the, the, the standard usages of particular, even message types for securities or tokens that are relevant in FIX, we could, I mean, Manny, you've probably seen some, but we can begin to map out some of that as well. So we can yeah. get into a level of technical that is um, relatively interesting for this particular work stream. Yeah, I mean, there is still there's still a big work being done on the fixed, yeah. fixed side of things on the digital asset side. Definitely, yeah. we can show some you know, highlights here. Uh, so people who are adopting, uh, particularly with trade, trading protocols on the capital markets, uh, you know, oh, it's better to at least follow standards, uh, whereas in the more on the retail side, uh, anything goes, it's all up to, you know, the much more advantage um, in, in the capital markets because of the large players involved um, in any solution that doesn't point to a standard, it's going to be very hard to get off the ground. Yeah, and I think many where we'll start to see real challenges in, is, is adoption rates. And I mean, I think the perceived challenges is actually a separate work stream. So I think there's some overlap there, but Adoption rates is a, a different caliber of conversation. So let's get through the foundational stuff on, on the standards and then, then we can reassess if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, the point was once we create these top level projects, then there would be interlinks between them, right? I mean, basically, if you say perceived challenges or gaps, then that would link back into um, Kelly's work, uh, which is going, which we are going, which we are going to go through, on obstacles and how do they map onto the um, the standards um, 
being adopted in blockchain. I mean, uh, it's one thing to talk about standards. The other thing is uh, we have to uh, put the spin of how they are relevant to blockchains and how they are relevant to Hyperledger and uh, then into the actual uh, projects that are out there. Uh, so in the beginning, this would be uh, more, I mean, this is my thought that it, it would be more of a resource for people who want to uh, want to get acquainted with the capital markets and then it would go into a, you know if they want to actually work on a project is there such are there such projects already out there and if so what are the challenges they are running into what are the things that uh, you know people have done what are the solutions that people have uh, created uh, both technical and non-technical um, and then how can we take this whole conversation forward. And of course, we are interested in not duplicating work that is being done elsewhere like WSBA, so that if we can have links into uh, some open material that you guys have, sure. open stuff uh, that you're willing to share with us, then we can just link to that instead of belaboring uh, everything on the same wiki but it is more of a place to collect all this and to guide people through, uh, you know, and uh, interrupt me at any, any time and uh, let me know. Yeah, and Vipin, I, 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 I agree. We're absolutely happy to do that. It ties to something you mentioned earlier about our enterprise solutions working group, with, which Manny also referenced. We, we also have a, a technology and product working group that really is the liaison point for some of the partnerships we have, like Hyperledger, um, yeah, so happy to, happy to make the publicly facing stuff available and, and uh, integrate here. Um, the, the one other thing that I, I want to throw out that I, I'm, I'm happy for anyone on the call to tell me to, to be quiet about it, but um, I'm always a little leery when an, a, an organization body publishes or, or states things, quote unquote, standards. And I just come out of, um, and I get what we're trying to do here, Vipin, from uh, painting the landscape of what emerging standards there are. Um, but we should be cognizant that we're not proposing standards. And, and I'll give you the living example that we struggle with. We, we spend a lot of time also looking in the accounting world, and uh, we have a global partnership with AICPA, which is a, a guidance and standard setting collaborative body. Uh, and every time we say, hey, we're doing standards, they say, no, you're not. You can't. So I just we should be cognizant that these are evolving standards. And, and when we share this across the global hyperledger ecosystem, um, basically, it's a, it's a state of play in the world of standards in this space. But I'm happy to hear someone tell me I'm wrong. No, no, no. That's it's precisely it. We are not developing standards. We are describing them. And we are describing them and putting them into uh, a particular uh, uh, place in terms of our interest in creating solutions for capital markets through blockchains or through, uh, you know, hyperledger-based uh, uh, DLTs, that is our aim, not to develop standards. Understood. So now we go back to the projects. Um, and uh, Stan had uh, said, along with uh, others, had said that uh, they would come up with uh, what are the good use cases for DLTs and what works and what does not work. Yeah, Stan has uh, re expressed uh, regrets because he's on vacation. So, uh, and, and I don't think there's much in that, in that link there. There's almost nothing there, I think. I, uh, I put together some of the stuff here as well. Uh, and if anybody wants to uh, do anything more here that would be great otherwise we go back to I mean let's discuss this for a mi minute if you if you guys have any thoughts on this goals so similar to the goals here we have put the same go similar goal uh, a goals heading on the standards too by stating what you said Ron that we are not in the business of developing standards but we are uh, you know, so that's, uh, that is a, uh, that is one more action item that either I or money will take to uh, put that on top of the standards. But 
coming back to the use cases, um, would you like to um, say anything more about this team of you? Because you're all active in this space. So it, it's Ron again. Uh, Vipin. So quick, just quickly, I, I, I'd be interested in everyone else's opinion as well. I think things have evolved enough where we can actually point to specific use cases in either beta or production. Um, and I, 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 I'm happy to be, I know Kelly, you told me to log in. I'm sorry, I'll do that later, but I'm happy to be, we, I spent quite a bit of time talking through some use cases as I'm sure everyone on the call does. Um, is it acceptable to point to specific use cases in either beta or production as long as they've been publicly referenced? Because I think I, looking at these categories, several are there, uh, I, I think. Um, and the one other, or at least they're uh, available for us to review from a use case perspective. Uh, the other category I'd, I would add is, is things like data and analytics um, from a capital markets use case, which once I get access, I'm happy to add it or if Vipin you want to do it, but um, okay, if, yeah, I, I can do it. Yeah, um, but you know, Manny, Gary, you, you and I have spoken about this stuff in the past as well. I, I'd be interested in any, anyone's perspective. Um, there's some stuff, there's some solid stuff we can point to, or, or at least begin to point to. Yeah, again, we are not going to do overly, uh, I mean, at least I think Dan's, I mean, sorry, Stan's uh, uh, aim was to, uh, you know, to say which, which, which are good use cases, which are not, meaning uh, from what he has seen, uh, you know, from what he has seen, what is, what is good, what's not good, you know? Uh, and, and where there are gaps. Meaning, I mean, you know, what are the struggles that people are having when they're trying to do, let's say if they're, uh, if they're doing, uh, uh, you know, trading, of uh, use cases, right? I mean, sometimes, uh, sometimes the uh, block, uh, the DLTs are not performant enough in terms of uh, handling the program program trading or something like that. So, I mean, I think that's his take on it. But let's let's see what what you know what he has to say. But okay. Uh, I, I will try to move this data analytics part to you know one more in, but uh, looks like it's not cooperating with me today. Do, does anyone disagree with that data and analytics point? I just want to make sure I'm not uh, forcing a bullet point on this whole thing. Well, in in the top level exchange traded products and over the counter products, it's more on a product basis that um, that it's taken. Data and analytics would cover all of them, right? I mean, if you yeah. want to do any of these uh, um, use cases, you would need uh, data analytics as a cross-cutting concern because uh, that is informs each one of those, uh, like trading, post-trade, risk management. Every one of them requires uh, some kind of a data analytics uh, uh, layer or overlay. Right. So, um, maybe we, yeah, we, we, we should, we should talk about it. Uh, and again, like you said, there are plenty of examples out there and we are not going to go belabor the, uh, the details of them rather provide links to them and maybe a little bit of commentary based on the expertise of individuals here. Because what is the value that we are bringing, not just aggregating what is out there, but also providing some kind of a commentary. Understood. Um, so that's that. Next one is um, obstacles, which Kelly, was uh, working on, so she probably would, I, I can bring up the page and then we can talk about that. Thank you. One of the things that I was thinking about is how complex this is in this particular sector and how many products and different projects involve 
a high level of interaction in the context of an ecosystem. And that made me think about an article I read that said we need to make sure that we're identifying a significant problem or a significant set of problems rather than getting excited about the technology and trying to apply it to something. And I think because of the expertise in this group, it would be a good idea for us to, on the one hand, develop standards, et cetera, or describe standards or to detail standards, but on the other hand, to really think about what two or three of the obstacles are and set those up almost in an OKR type framework where if we have one particular obstacle to set up a couple of objectives for that, to go out and get some research, some transnational research, to take a look at what some of the other ecosystems are doing with that. And if we can pick one or two obstacles to really go deep on and to build um, a solid understanding of and to be able to convey that to the group, then those obstacles can lead to products that make more money and assist more um, sectors, et cetera, et cetera. So I thought that people on the call might be able to off the top of their head say, oh my gosh, these are the three things that would be unbelievable if we could address or that are crippling if we don't address. And I didn't hear anything. So I just went out and grabbed a couple of just generalist articles on what other researchers see um, that are in the field regarding what some of the big problems are or what some of the issues are. And I was hoping that people could take a look at that or maybe that would trigger what they believe would be something near revolutionary in the context of capital markets with Hyperledger. And then we could, as a group, almost just for fun, um, but also potentially toward an interesting approach to product development to be able to then put our, our minds together and address that. And at the same time, that would help us to really see some of the areas of gaps in standards, some of the areas of gaps in use cases, um, some of the things that we need to add to the taxonomy and help us to address a couple of significant issues. So anyway, I'm open if that is not a fit, but that was my general way of thinking. Yeah. This is Gary here. Um, you know, what, what are the issues when you just talk about blockchain generally uh, in the context of capital markets is, well, there's a need to kind of compartmentalize the conversation. There's, there's the token world, which has its own obstacles because digital custody is not quite adopted yet, or, you know, at the institutional level, you know, MetLife is not going to buy $30 million of some deal in tokens. Uh, and then there's, there's blockchain just to run data and run workflows. And, and one of the obstacles is as someone who's selling a technology product into the uh, capital markets participants, you, you, you know, you just come at them and it's just, oh, Bitcoin or this or that. And, you know, it's, it's hard to really kind of frame or compartmentalize the conversation. So you know, to me, it's almost like there's subgroups here. There's, there's the digital securities compartment, which has its own obstacles that are say separate from just running a deal on blockchain where there's no token say, and then, you know, I don't know. I, I just wish there were a way to separate the conversations out because so many people just put their palm up, uh, you know, put their arm out the second you start talking about blockchain because they're, they're conjuring up some kind of bearer instrument where they're going to lose their investment, you know, does anyone else agree or encounter that? I, I, mean, I agree with you fully, Gary. I mean, it's the it's the education and acceptance conversation we often have that, and we still have, I'm sure you do as well, and everyone on this call, I still have conversations where I meet with someone and I mention blockchain, and invariably they say, oh, th that Bitcoin stuff is, is, I'm not interested in. Yeah. And I, I think it's the acceptance and education, which is a bit more squishy than, than some of the more granular stuff we're talking about. So I, I'm with you there 100%. Uh, I think anything in the context that we can point to of this group for outside parties that helps aid that discussion internally within their organizations, I think is very important. Um, and I think the other two obstacles, and I, I'd be interested in other opinions on this, is the, the obstacles we see often and off, over and over again, which is uh, interoperability and integration. Yeah. If we're talking about capital markets, you're not talking about a new ecosystem. There's a lot of stuff it's got to connect to. And what are the challenges that need to be recognized to do that? 
And, yeah. and also about trust. This Kelly's yep. article, this, the middle one, I think, uh, about trusted and intermediary. I mean, and again, the conversation, uh, there are a lot of compartments around a trustless versus decentralized trust. Like in, uh, like in capital markets, I think you, you, you still need someone, a, a grown up in the room to undo a wrong, you know, and, and I think there's, you know, like we're using a, a blockchain uh, platform that, that encompasses a trustee and custodian, you know, for now, for today's world, that may not be the case in 2030, right? But, but so there's just this big spectrum, you know, of tokens, no tokens, trust, trustless. And, um, you know, it's such, everyone attaches, uh, you know, just picks, you know, assigns a whole spectrum to a specific little use case and then can't get their arms around it. So anyway, that's, that's just it's the hard. piece I've developed over the years. It's hearts and minds, Gary. <laughs> yeah. um, the way we, we try to, you know, uh, compartmentalize uh, in, 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 in taking on Gary's point of view is that is we try to, uh, we try to categorize this. Contract networks and asset networks. Uh, you know, uh, asset networks are representing digital assets, and crypto is a subset of that. And then the contract network is exa exactly the one that runs the contract. The life cycles are trades, and then eventually it may or may end up, you know, settling in some of some some kind of an asset tokens. And I mean, interestingly enough, need not even go into the into the digital asset world. You still have the traditional payment trails mechanism, as some of the blockchains are connecting to, uh, like a Swift. So you could still continue to do in an existing payment trail as part of the silicon process. So uh, yes, it, 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 it's better to you know uh, organize them as you know, more or less in, in contract versus digital assets. Then will help us frame um, better uh, the problem problem areas and also what are the challenges uh, that, that, that that's being had, that are uh, the, uh, applicable to each one of these uh, categories. Uh, it, it, it does that make some sense? Yes, indeed. Um, but I've also heard that unless we bring them together uh, in some sense that we are not going to achieve the true potential, meaning the uh, uh, DVP type of approach. Uh, but Gary brings up a very good point is that um, that there has to be a way to um, correct uh, transactions that are wrong, patently wrong. And uh, uh, so the DVP approach uh, with no recourse is going to be tempered with that recourse component thrown in there. And I know that Several uh, of the existing blockchains have attempted to do that by having, you know, a regnet on top of the, uh, what's out there and then holding the parties accountable for that in an in a off-chain manner and then forcing them to, uh, to reverse by uh, giving the money back or doing something else. You could also argue, Vipin, that a properly implemented DLT or blockchain solution wouldn't encounter that problem at all. I, I conceptually struggle with editable blockchains, which aren't blockchains, to my mind. No, it's not, it's not editable in the sense that it would be, okay, this has uh, gone on. Now we reverse a transaction by another transaction, right? I mean, it's not, I, I mean, we don't, we don't, so we don't have to go to the chameleon uh, hash uh, approach. Uh, um, you know, implemented by Accenture, but mm -hmm. you're right, Ron, that uh, if properly implemented, these edge cases, uh, you know, the frequency should drop drastically, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, the, but yeah. they're still there, and we have to, uh, in order to bring the hearts and minds, we have to address them, or we have to talk about them, but right. we can show actual data saying, look, you know, before when everything was settled by hand, this was the frequency of, uh, you know, reconciliation, uh, what do you call it, errors. And then- So it's interesting, in the OTC derivatives world, you know, a lot of the trades are done, most of it even today, bilaterally over the phone, and, and each party has their own representation of the trade, and then they try to put those trades in, 
uh, uh, this is a big problem because they, you know, what what they say in the forum, what they end up in actually executing or entering to their own system, there's a big discrepancy and, and secondly, here's a big problem. So to address that is where you know, in CDM, uh, in, in Insta CDM, there, in the uh, event specification, there are a way to identify that you are, this is a correction to an, an, an pre-agreed trade and hence this cancels or replaces the other and there's a whole data mechanism using linkages and, 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 uh, you know, and hashes so that uh, you would have a proper chain of amendments uh, to, you know, to specify how your contracts are being amended. So in the same case, you could take the same event model to say if there was a payment, the payment happened uh, that was uh, erroneous, you would again, uh, uh, you know, through data standards uh, and through smart contracts, be able to amend or uh, in essentially reverse by, by uh, you know, uh, implementing data standards uh, using the PDM based contract. So that's how the, 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 the methodology is being evolved uh, within the new data spec. Now, you know, if you look at the existing standards in FTML and fix up, um, these are not addressed. They're purely messaging between two parties uh, and, you know, settlement is not something that's being addressed uh, effectively in any of those uh, yeah. uh, standards unless you go into the ISO, you know, or the SWIFT based standards. Yeah, I, I see your point, man. I, I, I think the devil's in the details of what these edge cases are and the overlay with blockchain, because I think a lot of those edge cases go away. Yeah. Um, and, and Vipin, I don't mean to be rude. It's a great call, and I'm happy to keep going, but I do have a hard stop at 10 o'clock. Is there an invite um, going out for calendars or that I missed, or is there something I need to do in Wiki to make sure it's on my calendar? This wasn't in my calendar today. Well, what's happening is it's a piecemeal invite being sent out by the community architect. Actually, unfortunately, um, 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 Karen has dropped off, but uh, I cannot edit the Hyperledger calendar. Only she or one of the community architects can do it. And since we haven't fixed on an actual time, uh, they haven't sent out the invite but they did send out the invite for today's but only unfortunately yesterday so you may not have received it but you're right the, we are coming up we are past three minutes past the time and uh, you know we should uh, ring off and but one more thing before we go we can continue to uh, collaborate on the wiki on the email list on the rocket chat uh, to keep our momentum going because every two weeks uh, is often, you know, we forget what we did. So uh, the most important thing is to keep uh, keep engaging on an asynchronous basis. Sounds good, gents. Sounds good, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, so unless there are some closing thoughts from anyone, I am going to end the call. Anyone has anything more to say? Great chatting with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Mr. Thank you.